Hi everybody and welcome back to Portside Soap Company. Today I'm going to show you how we make our mango and papaya whipped sugar scrub. As you can see I start with coconut oil. I'm just going to place this in the microwave in five second bursts. Coconut oil does melt very quickly so keep an eye on it. I've started with our base which is Stevenson's foam whip base. People call it bath butter. It is OPC on the labelling. You're going to place this into a bowl and start whisking. I use an electronic whisk because it creates more air bubbles inside. What you want to achieve is a fluffy whipped soap. In our oils we put our fragrance oil, we use coconut oil which we previously melted at the beginning, we use sweet almond oil and glycerin. Coconut oil is great for the skin, almond oil is also really good for the skin and glycerin just helps bind it all together and make it that bit thicker. You'll find with different fragrance oils that they can affect the whipped soap in different ways. Some make it really runny, some make it really stiff. It's just about testing your fragrance oil with the whip soap base. Slowly incorporate the oils into your whip soap base. It doesn't create many air bubbles at this point because it's quite liquidy. This is a fragrance oil which doesn't really make it liquidy, so as you can tell if you use fragrance oils that do, it does get quite wet. If this happens you can pop it in the fridge for 10 minutes, that will help harden it up and then bring it back out and whip it up again. Even if you have a fragrance oil that you find does make it very wet, You'll find that once you've piped it into its containers and within a week or so, it's back to a hard state where it's got air bubbles inside it also. Another thing you can do, which I add to all my products, is I add kaolin clay. This does help to make it harder. It won't make it harder like a bubble frosting recipe, but it will make it hard enough so that it looks like frosting. And you can achieve those air pockets you want from whipping it. Make sure all of it's incorporated, because you can get bits, and that just means that the kaolin clay hasn't been fully incorporated inside. Constantly scraping the bowl just to make sure I get every last bit. I find making whip soap so satisfying. I've never been a good baker, so this is my chance to. As you can see it's starting to hold its shape now and it's becoming more like a buttercream. Just separate however much you want. I'm doing two colours in this, so I'll separate it in half. Here we've got our neon pigments from Easy Colours. I'm using the orange and the yellow. In these containers, they're a lot bigger than the containers I use for my bath bomb colours. I use this because you get more of a dispersing of the colour. So with this batch, I'm going to add one gram of the orange. And I'm going to add 0.8 grams 
of the yellow. Just place a bit of your mixture inside, mix it up. Yep, that's built it. You can also use water-based colours with this, just use a lot less than we're using for these. You can also use micas. Micas you'll need to use the same amount of this. Um, but it's all about playing around with it and testing what's best for you. Just going to mix our first colour in, which is the yellow. So now just measure out your sugar and salt and add it to your mixture. You want to add more weight in sugar than you do in the whip soap base if you're making a sugar scrub. You can go up to double the amount of sugar and salt. Um, this will make a really scratchy scrubby soap and it won't have as much foam to it. But you could add something maybe like castor oil which would then give you that foam back. Now just do exactly the same to the other colour and add the sugar. If you just wanted to make a whip soap then just skip this part and don't add the sugar. Now I'm going to roll out a piece of parchment paper. I always use parchment paper when I'm piping my whip soaps. I just find it easier for them to stay in their lines, especially if you're doing ribbons or if you want just a splash of colour. It's easier to stay in when you're using such a big piping bag. When doing a sugar scrub I don't add a piping tip to my piping bag because the sugar scrubs are quite thick which means that it wouldn't get any definition in, this, in the tip. If you were going to just do a whip soap, you'd add your piping tip now and then you'd put your whip soap inside the piping bag. I use 200ml PET fully recyclable containers which I get from Soposh. I weigh all of mine to make sure they're the same weight. Also you'll find you need to tap them down to release some of the air pockets, but you don't want to release too many air pockets, especially if you're doing just a whip soap. This was how we make our sugar scrubs, but we will be doing more videos on our whip soaps. And at the end of the video, you'll see a short clip of how we pipe our mango and papaya whip soap.
In the next video I'll be showing you how you can turn that little bit that's left at the end into a nice scrubby soap for yourself. Thank you ever so much for watching and make sure to like, subscribe and comment underneath what product you want us to feature next. Cheers, bye bye.